Um, as a secular homeschooler, it's problematic. Hey everybody, it's Margaret. Welcome to my channel, Homeschool Honey. In today's video, I thought I would take the opportunity to recap how our 2020 slash 2021 school year went and how we're moving forward in the new year. I'll, I'm gonna try my best to start making more videos, uh, our homeschool videos. I have some still from last year that I need to upload that I've created, I just haven't edited yet. Um, but I know there's a lot of new homeschoolers uh, that came through the pandemic and realized that this is a, a decision for their family that they wanted to make for whatever reason. Everybody homeschools for different reasons. And so just as a, a, a starter, uh, I want to introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Margaret. I have been homeschooling my two kids for, I guess it's been about three years now. And I'm finally at the place where I feel like I kind of think I know what's going on. So if you're really new at it and you feel like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't know. It's totally normal to feel that way. Um, and I, I come from a public school background, so I feel, I taught public school for 14 years, uh, elementary age, <clears throat> pardon me. So I felt like, oh, you know, I, I should have a pretty good grasp on how to homeschool. Well, it turns out homeschooling and public schooling are completely different. It, it can be. I didn't want to recreate the public school experience for my children at home. I wanted it to be com not completely different, but a whole different experience. <clears throat> pardon me. So that being said, I felt like I had to undo or unteach myself some of the things that I did as a public school teacher. And it took a good year for me to stop kind of peeking at what are the, where should they be? What, what would they be doing in public school right now? Probably for my first year, I still did some of that. So it's completely normal. Um, and then I also want to say, it's very tempting, and, and you're going to find other homeschoolers, hopefully, that you can befriend. And even within your friend circles of homeschoolers, everybody does it differently. Everyone has different expectations. Fortunately, you'll find people that are supportive. Unfortunately, you'll also find people that think that their way is the right way. And maybe they say off-the-cuff comments that are hurtful. Um... <laughs> I'm kind of speaking from experience here, where it's just like, you know, that's your way of doing it, but that doesn't mean it's the only way of doing it. You know, like if somebody's, I'm, I'm going to show my plan book and I've already know like some, it wouldn't be what other people would do. So just keep that in mind. Like each homeschooling family is going to do what's right for them. So don't criticize other people for how they homeschool their children. That's that. Okay. So that being said, I, uh, our family is kind of a mix of different curriculums. I use it a number of different curriculums, but then we also go off curriculum and kind of unschool, say unschool with quotes, uh, where I just follow the kids' uh, interests. If I see something going on that is, if they're really getting into something and wanting to do some self-driven, dri self-drove, self-driven <clears throat> learning, then I release control of my plans. You know, I've got the plans. I just set that aside and we follow what they're doing or what their interests are in the moment. And so that happens a number of times throughout the year where it, it could last a week, it could last two weeks or more. It just kind of depends. And you know your kids, so you can kind of gauge that if that's right for you. Uh, I know some families who are, they follow the curriculum to the T, their kids have to do, you know, X, Y, Z every single day. Um, and again, you just have to find what's right for your family. For my family, I, I just gauge my kids. My kids have uh, a lot of anxiety. And so I have to work around that ADHD. So, and then one of my kids is dyslexic. So I try to make sure that I keep those things in mind when we are all right, that being said, I want to show you my plan book from last year or this year. Um, again, we take off June and July. So we 
And this is the one holdover, <laughs> maybe just one. Uh, I try, now I'm in Texas, so we have different standards than other states. Uh, and there's no set number of days or hours or things like that in Texas for how much you have to school every day. But I try to make sure that we do 180 days of public school, or public school, of school a year. Uh, whether that's field trips, I count that. I mean, there's lots of things that I count as a school day that, yeah, anyway. Okay, so I try to make sure we get 180 days in. We didn't this year. We had COVID. I had COVID for two and a half months back in October, November, and December. So we didn't make it. We still got like 160-something days in. Uh, yeah, so that's that's good. All right, so let me share with you my, this is a particular part of the plan that was kind of a, a week that we went off. Um, this is what it looks like generally. I have our reading up here. This is their reading curriculum. This is the read aloud, whether I'm reading aloud to them or we're doing audiobooks. Sometimes we do both. Uh, grammar and writing, spelling, math, science, social studies, and then like art or I'll put cooking or something over here. Um, and as you can see, like I don't go to town like like I would when I was in public school and had the objective and the guided practice and the list of the activities. For the most part, I just put like, you know, this is what they're reading. This, who was Albert Einstein? Who was Abraham Lincoln? They were going to write summaries. And then I just like, that's what we're doing. That's, that's what we're doing. Here's Park Day. We're doing vocabulary with our words and drawing. I mean, that's pretty much it. And then like, Usually in, in math, I'll get to that in a second. We do Matthew C. So I don't usually write out what we're doing. I just put Matthew C. They know what page they're in in their books. I don't feel the need to like write it all out. But this, <coughs> pardon me, this particular week, this was uh, my kids had chosen to do some areas of interest that they wanted to learn a little bit more about. And they chose Vesuvius. One of my kids chose Vesuvius. So we spent a little time look, learning about Vesuvius. And so I, it was kind of fun for me. You know, it, I, I like it when I can pull things together where everything kind of wraps around a theme, right? And so that week we were, you know, playing a volcano game. I had them make up a, a volcano game, you know, learning about the heights, you know, what do you call it? I'm trying to say transferring the heights, but going from feet to inches, converting, right? Converting uh, measurements and things like that. So that's what we did about heights of volcanoes. Let's convert measurements of heights of volcanoes and... um. Yeah, just so we just kind of wrapped everything around volcanoes that week. And then the cool thing was later we got to go take a field trip. We were in Houston. We got they had a Pompeii exhibit, so we got to go to that. That was pretty cool. So that's uh, my plan book. That was like a, uh, I'm gonna try to show you a different week. This is from last year. Uh, <laughs> but some I mean sometimes I just like cross out what we did if if we didn't do what was in the book, and I just jot down what we what we ended up actually doing. I'm trying to show you. I mean, this is just what it, it doesn't, there's nothing major, right? I just kind of jot down what we're, you know, vocabulary that we're doing or things that we want to, I want to make sure we talk about. We're doing Children of the Longhouse. So this is all our Longhouse book that we were doing. I mean, nothing major, but I like to have it. Uh, and there's nobody coming to check. I mean, again, in Texas, we don't have to report to anybody. We don't have to sign in with the district or the state or anything like that. It's really really relaxed in Texas. So I'm very fortunate. Uh, and actually, based on what the state requires in Texas, we have to teach reading, grammar, math, good citizenship, and spelling. Those are the only five requirements that have to be taught. And everybody's always asking, what is good citizen? Good citizenship. I kind of look at it like civics. I think that's sort of an open-ended thing where if if some families use that time for their religious studies or or whatever, I don't know. I mean, we're secular, so we don't do that. Uh, when they were in Scouts, I counted, like, they did a lot of stuff through Scouts. I counted that as part of their good citizenship, you know. Okay, so let's talk about what uh, my plan is going forward, and then I'll show you the different curriculums that I kind of piece things together because I don't use all of everything from certain curriculums. So this coming year, we are changing things up a little bit. And my plan is to do five weeks on and one week off. I've tried something like this in the past and it didn't, it didn't work. So again, this is, I have to realize that this is just a plan. 
uh, five weeks on, one week off, and that gives us a full week, you know, as a break for me pulling together anything we need for the next five week chunk, any kind of makeup stuff. Um, yeah, it just gives us, I even wrote it on here, one week off, makeup, plan for the next week, etc., etc. Now, that being said, I know full well that during that five week chunk, we might have field trips or park days or <clears throat> what have you. I mean, I don't make, you know, we don't sit around here. And because it's a different year, like last year, we didn't have any of the classes we used to take or um, one of my kids went to like a one day kind of academy, not academy, but a school, like an enrichment type of one day enrichment school. They used to do wilderness school once a month. And so th all of these things that we used to do before the pandemic, we didn't do last year. And I don't know what it's going to look like going forward in the fall. I know we want to try to get out and meet more people. But again, we are, I'm waiting for my kids to be vaccinated. <laughs> so we're just sticking with a small group of people at the moment. Uh, that being said, I know that within those five week chunks that I'm planning, that there are going to be days that we are not doing, you know, curriculum stuff. And so when I plan... I need to make sure that I don't over plan. This is my problem. I over plan. So if I can technically plan like I would for like four days and then know that I'm going to have a day during the week where we're at the park or where somebody's having an off day, if we end up having a, a day where everything is done, then either we can start on the next week's stuff or just give the kids time to explore their own interests that day which I'm totally fine with. Okay, so that's the plan. And I did, you know, hash it all out to make sure I was going to get my self-imposed 180 days. And then I'm also looking at, because my eldest is in eighth grade, technically. And starting in high school, I want to start trying to get transcripts going. But I am learning how to do that. So I was researching how it's normally done. So like one semester would be half of a credit, let's say for history, right? And you want to have so many credits. So you need a, a, a credit of history. Well, half a semester is one credit. The other half is the other half. So I'm trying to, I was trying to hash that out there, half a credit, half a credit, to figure it out, kind of practicing this year while, while my kids, well, my eldest is in eighth grade, so that when high school starts, I'll kind of have a feel for it. I don't even know. <laughs> I, I will see how it goes. You know, I can, in Texas, public uh, homeschools are considered private schools. So whether I want to go the route of having my child graduate from homeschool or go the route of getting a GED and then going to the community college after that. So that those are some options because... I don't know what's well, going to be the best route for us. Um, personally, I I got my GED and went to junior college and then went to the university and it worked out fine for me. So that's something, I mean, I don't see either of my kids, I don't particularly want either of my kids to go straight to a big university for their freshman year because I know what their anxiety levels are like and I know uh, the cost <laughs> of big universities so I would prefer it if they went started at a junior college because the class sizes are smaller and this and that. So it all, I mean, it really depends. But if they get to that point and they really want to go to university, then we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. So let's chit chat about the curriculums that I used ish. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. So what I do I use, and I'm going to tell you what parts of the curriculums I use. This is Build Your Library, and this is a pretty open and closed type of curriculum. It has everything but math, I think, spelling. <laughs> um, okay, deep breath on this. When I first started, I tried to do everything that they put in there every day, and it is it was so hard uh, because we, even still, we only homeschool, like school, maybe three hours a day, maybe four on some days. But it was really, really tough putting that um, pressure on myself to try to do that. Because as you can see, like here is week 19 
and it covers history, literature, reading. The literature is like what I would consider read aloud. Uh, literature, reading, science, art, language arts, poetry, and then math you'd fill in your own. And then spelling, of course, we would have to do. So, yeah, we didn't do all that stuff every single day. And it was a lot of like reading, like these, the history is like read this page from the book, whether they read it or I read it to them. And then it was like, read this little blurb. Okay, move on to the next thing. Read this little blurb. It just didn't feel, it felt very really disjointed to me. So I don't do it that way anymore. Uh, basically, the things that I use, we might touch on the history if it, if it ties into what they're reading about. So um, here, we're, we're just finishing up about to start the, the American Revolution. We're just touching on it at the end of this school year. In the new school year, we're going to, you know, hit the American Revolution really hard. <clears throat> and so pretty much everything's going to revolve around that. So the history that we read together or any documentaries we watch. And then the literature, that's the read aloud, Sophia's War. We're reading that right now over the summer because it's kind of long. So I'm reading that to them. And then they're going to be reading, you know, about George Washington and then they'll be starting a research project about one of the founding fathers, or I'm going to let them choose a founding mother if they would like. Um, on a side note, there's a book called Founding Mothers that Cokie Roberts wrote that is just such, such a good, such a good book. Is it Cokie Roberts? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so going from there, so I try to have a lot of our stuff revolving around that. So uh, any spelling that we do, spelling is... I'm sorry I keep clearing my throat, first of all. <clears> throat> um, we'll talk about spelling in a second. But I try to, to get as much as we can wrapped around one thing because it makes our day flow so much better and everything kind of ties together more nicely than having very disjointed everythings, right? Uh, so there's that. So how do I want to put this? Okay. So that's that. <laughs> as much as we can, that's the biggest chunk. Uh, whether it's wrapping everything around history stuff or wrapping everything around something we're doing in science. I try to go one of those two ways with it. Uh, I've also done that with art. So we last year we did a lot of stuff with the Impressionist. And so we kind of wrapped a lot of stuff around art and the Impressionist. <sighs> okay, so... When we are doing that and when we are doing a lot of writing with that, I tend to count that as our spelling grammar time right, with the writing because of the editing that they do. Um, we use Google Voice a lot. We use the, the spelling in there where they can see when they've spelled a word wrong and learn how to correct it in, in the writing. I have tried with my kids for years to do, we did, oh, was it all about spelling? I think it was all about spelling. Uh, and then I tried spelling power. Because of my, my eldest dyslexia and I don't know what the other deal is with my other kid, we can have a spelling list and take a test on Friday, miss half the words. So I, I'll give them the same words the next week. And then they'll miss fire at like half the other words, right? So I realized very quickly, not quickly enough probably, that that was just us spinning our wheels and they were not retaining it and it was just a waste of time. So I moved from doing curriculum-based spelling program to teaching them how to recognize when things are not spelled correctly in their own writing. We have a spelling dictionary that they... When they ask me like how to spell a word that they have to write it in this like spell, it's like a spelling dictionary that has blank lines. You could probably print one off, you know, that spelling dictionary. What do you call it? I don't know. Anyway, so whenever they're writing and they're not sure how to spell a word, they take that out. They see if it's there. If it's not, then we write it in there and make sure it's spelled correctly. So that's been working a bit better. Just getting them to think about spelling when they're writing as opposed to this is just an arbitrary list of words. I even tried like pulling words from their writing that they misspelled. I've tried so many things. <laughs> okay, but that seems to be working better for us because now they're thinking about spelling when they're writing, which is ultimately the goal in the end, right? That they are thinking about how they're spelling things. Okay, 
So that's spelling. I feel like I'm kind of disjointed now. Uh, okay, so the writing that I am doing this year, and we've done, I'm trying to see which is which. Um, off and on we've used, this is Brave Writer, right? Uh, Brave Writer, and we're using Partnership Writing, and then Faltering Ownership. We're going to be moving into that. I also want to say, I don't pay attention to ages. So if you saw like, oh, that's level two, or that's, a, and this says grade three, ages eight to 10, I don't even care. I don't even care. Because my kids, the chapter books are good. Uh, they're progressing. I don't care. <laughs> they're learning. They're working at their level. I can ratchet it up or down um, based on their ages. I didn't mention that to you, that my kids are 11 and 13. Other than math, they do all the same stuff. So, it, and it works fine for us. Uh, again, everybody's different. You may have a kid that's off on another level or one that needs a more assistance. But this is what works for us. So, all right. Um, so we're working on partnership in writing. And yes, yeah, some of it is a little bit, like we did a homonym book in, the, in partnership writing. They wanted to spend like a week or something on it and we did it in a, a day. Um, and we're gonna be doing this like imaginary continent project, which I think they're really going to enjoy. <sighs> writing is a struggle. You know, having uh, kids with ADHD and kids that are, you know, one of my kids is dyslexic. So it can be a big struggle. So I'm really trying to not make it um, something that causes a lot of misery. And so I go forward very carefully with writing, uh, using a lot of graphic organizers, foldables, and things like that. So we're going to be working on our writing project for the American Revolution coming up in the fall. And I have not finished planning out how exactly I'm going to do that. I do have a video coming out, hopefully soon, about a project that we did. It was a big project about the Spanish mission. We went on to do the mission trail and we ended up creating this huge book, but it and it took time, but it, it ended up being really, really uh, enjoyable to make and use and write in, <clears throat> pardon me. So I'll, I'll share that in another video, but it was really good. Okay, so I talked about, now the history from this curriculum and this one right now, it's using the Usborne, Usborne is that how you say it? Encyclopedia of World History and then Story of the World. Um, as a secular homeschooler, I have to pull in a lot of other stuff because it really, I feel like a lot of it does revolve around it does pull in other religions somewhat, but it really follows a lot of stuff that happened in Christianity and the spread of Christianity. I, 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 it's problematic in one respect. However, I do know that in that time period, that is what drove a lot of things. <laughs> so, you know, it drove a lot of countries to war and it drove a lot of, you know, like the Roman Empire. I mean, it just like, there was a lot <laughs> going on and, and, and Christianity and religion drove a lot of it. So, I have to look at it as an opportunity to discuss with my kids finding various sources of information because relying on one perspective is not always wise. So <laughs> I think that you can use it as a teaching opportunity too. If you personally know, like there's another take to that. Like this is really kind of whitewashing things, or this is really Christian washing things. Um, there's other perspectives as far as, you know, conquerors and things and like viewing it from the, the winner's side. Anyway, the victors got to write the history, right? Okay. <laughs> so that's the history and stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to do the best I can for my kids. One thing I'm really enjoying is that we've finally gotten to the point, and this is another, this is in the, the science for this science. Um, I'm really glad that they pulled in this book for a lot of the experiments. And this is called Fizz, Bubble, and Flash. 
and it's a journey through the periodic table. So it doesn't hit all of the periodic elements, but it is hands-on activities for different elements, you know, the alkali, alkaline, you know, and, and taking you through the different um, parts of the periodic table. So we started that this year, and I honestly see it taking us through at least December because there's a lot, um, a lot in there. So I, that's been really good. We've been getting mouth science as well, but we have, we have so many, back, we're like backlogged because the box comes with like sometimes two or three experiments. So we, we've got that <clears throat> and then we're doing this for our science. And the book, the Brave, I'm um, not the Brave Writer, but the Build Your Library, it'll, it'll have this, but then it'll give links to like say a YouTube video to watch or something else. But you could totally pull in your own. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have such acid reflux or something. Now, when we're not doing writing, 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 uh, then I will have us use this daily grams. And daily grams, it just hits everything um, each day. And it's short and sweet, and they can get a good review. Uh, so it looks like this. So it'll have a capitalization, punctuation, parts of speech. Uh, and then writing, a little bit of a writing uh, activity. Now, we go over it each day. We talk about it. And so they get a little grammar lesson each day when it comes to that. So I feel like I've, I've hit everything. Have I? Maybe. All right. So um, my new planner, I don't know if you care. This is going to be the new one that I got. And this is the brand Blue Sky. It was the same type of planner that I used last year. Um, I just particularly liked it. So I can chunk things out the way I want and sketch sketch out our plans for the year. I hope this video was helpful. I feel like it was very, maybe disjointed, but maybe it's not as disjointed as I'm feeling like it is. Um, I have definitely got some other videos coming out about... Um, things we did this past year, some of the science experiments we did. And I've been posting some of our travel vlogs and activities, our road schooling, you know, when we go, because that's another thing. Sometimes we're just like, we need to get out of here. And we just hit the road, right? Um, so I've been posting some of our Arkansas trip and I have our San Antonio trip. We did use the we did a big research project and we used that on there and do it later. Anyway, but those videos will be coming out soon. And I really do hope that I can get on and share a little bit more about what we're doing in our homeschool throughout the year. But as you know, things get busy, you know, when you're in the throes of everything, it's kind of hard to jump in and make a video about it. Um, I will say that over the summer we are doing, I, I, I don't want to call it school, school, but we have a couple of projects we're going to be learning about. So I had sitting here. So next, next week, week after, we're going to be doing stuff about the layers of the earth. Because I realized when we were talking about volcanoes, we had never talked about the layers of the earth or plate tectonics. So I was like, we need to remedy that. Um, so this is a little squishy. I got it. Toy Joy, a little toy store. Um, so we're going to be doing activities about the layers of the earth. And over the summer, I, I don't do like any kind of writing worksheety stuff. Worksheety? Um, but we'll watch documentaries and we'll do like cooking projects or things with art. Uh, so we'll probably do like the clay. And that's been kind of fun. Just looking for fun activities to teach plate tectonics and layers of the earth. Right. Okay. I'll probably post some of that stuff too. So maybe I'll count that as school. Hmm. All right. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great summer. Let me know in the comments if you're schooling year round, if you're a new homeschooler, or if you are just like grasping at straws, trying to figure it out. Um, all right. I hope you're having a great one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.